Hello and welcome to the Autodesk Design Academy. In this sixth module, we will be talking about using anisotropic materials in your analyses, including an overview where we discuss the differences between isotropic and anisotropic materials, how to set up a part to use an anisotropic material model, which is done within the element definition dialog, and how to orient anisotropic material properties by defining the strong and weak material axes directions. Materials such as steel, aluminum, and brass are isotropic in nature, meaning that the physical properties are the same in any direction. Conversely, anisotropic materials have properties that vary depending upon the direction of the load. Examples of anisotropic materials are wood, composites, both reinforced polymers and laminates, and materials with an organized crystalline structure, such as silicon. Wood is classified as an orthotropic material, which is a particular subtype of anisotropic materials. Wood properties are specified according to the longitudinal direction, which is the axis of the tree trunk or branch, and the radial and tangential directions relative to the grain, as shown in this image. The stiffness and strength in the longitudinal direction is much greater than the stiffness and strength in the other two directions. Autodesk Simulation Mechanical supports finite element analyses based on anisotropic, orthotropic, and composite materials, both reinforced polymers and laminates, though a discussion of setting up composite laminates is beyond the scope of this module. In Simulation Mechanical, let's open an Autodesk Inventor model of a park bench. The model consists of two cast iron support frames and six wooden boards, eight parts in all. We will choose to exclude the working points and 3D sketches from the imported CAD model. Ensure that the analysis type is set to static stress with linear material models. Let's not use the default simulation mechanical color palette, instead importing the CAD model's part colors. Note that only the basic representative colors are imported, not any textures or patterns. Finally, we'll import the part names and materials from the CAD model. The eight-part assembly appears in the FEA editor environment. Notice that nothing appears to be currently defined, as evidenced by the red text and red X's in the parts list. We will have to first mesh the model before the element type and imported material properties appear in the browser. Go to the 3D mesh settings and access the Options sub-dialog. Let's set an absolute mesh size of 0.6 inches, which will produce three elements through the thickness of the boards, and then generate the mesh. To make it easier to select multiple parts for defining the properties, let's collapse the part details in the browser. Next, let's take a look at the imported cast iron properties for parts 1 and 2. Select both parts, right click and choose Edit Material. All of the required physical properties are defined. While the Simulation Mechanical Library offers a more diverse selection of different types and grades of iron, this material is sufficient for our example. Next, select Part 3. Then, hold down the Shift key and click Part 8. This action selects all parts from number 3 through number 8 inclusively. Next, right-click and choose Edit, Element Definition from the Context menu. We need to choose a different material model. The default model is isotropic, and the orthotropic materials will not appear until we select the orthotropic material model. After choosing this material model, the orthotropic tab of the dialog becomes available for selection. Let's check the material orientation setting in the orthotropic tab. Looking at our model, it is clear that the longitudinal axis of the boards needs to correspond to the global X direction, which is the default orientation. We don't need to make any changes. However, if a different orientation were necessary, the other choices are global Y and global Z directions, as well as spatial points. 
Use the coordinates table to define spatial points relative to the origin to dictate the vector directions of the three orthotropic axes. An index number is assigned to each coordinate set. Then, a set of spatial point coordinates is assigned to each orthotropic axis direction by the index number you choose. Now that the appropriate material model is specified for the boards, let's check the material properties. First, notice how the orthotropic properties are not specified for the material that we imported from the CAD model. We'll choose a new material from the wood folder of the Autodesk Simulation Material Library, specifically yellow birch. Now all of the required orthotropic properties appear on the right. We'll accept this material and click Yes to confirm the replacement of the previously defined material. We need to constrain our model, so we'll apply a fully fixed general constraint to the bottom of the four legs. Let's apply a force load of 600 pounds to the three seat boards, representing the combined weight of three large adult men. We'll distribute the load over the top surface of each board. Specify 600 pounds for the magnitude and be sure to activate the Distribute Magnitude Across All Surfaces option. Otherwise, 600 pounds would be applied to each board for a total load of 1,800 pounds. Since the load area of all three boards is the same, we also could have applied a force of 200 pounds with this option deactivated. The end result would be the same. The analysis is ready to run. The maximum displacement magnitude occurs at the mid-span of the seat boards and is slightly more than 1 32nd of an inch. Since the allowable stresses vary by direction for orthotropic materials, individual stress tensor results are typically more meaningful than combined or equivalent stresses, such as the von Mises stress. Let's look at the XX stress tensor, which is the strong direction of the wood and the direction that the flexure of the seat under load should produce. We should hide the cast iron parts so that the legend and color contours reflect the range of stresses in the boards only. The greatest magnitude of stress is negative, or compressive, and occurs where the boards contact the support frames. If you prefer to render the stresses with the greatest magnitude in red, regardless of the sign of the stress, activate the Absolute Value option in the expanded portion of the Settings panel. However, it is a good idea to consider the sign of stresses in wooden parts, since the tensile and compressive strengths typically differ in any axis direction. The maximum tensile stress occurs at mid-span along the bottom surfaces, and slightly inbound of the support frames on the top surfaces. The reason for the high tensile stress on top is the rigid, bonded connection of the boards to the support frames. The boards behave like built-in beams rather than simply supported ones, resulting in a high moment near the supports. You could model the connection between the boards and frames using surface contact and bolts, allowing some flexibility between them. However, for the purpose of demonstrating orthotropic material usage, that level of complexity was not necessary. In summary, we've defined anisotropic materials and looked at how to set up anisotropic, specifically orthotropic, materials in simulation mechanical, including defining the material property orientation direction. This video demonstrated a typical workflow for a static stress analysis using an orthotropic material, including setup and results evaluation. For additional information, Search for Composites in the Simulation Mechanical Help. Thank you for watching.